Today I have a fun video for you guys, hopefully. Um, I have with me two super strats that I'll be comparing um, and kind of making a video of just them being compared live together rather than looking at the specs. Like, I actually have hands-on feel for them. Um, and just my thoughts and opinions and comparison. I don't know. This is just something that I wanted and whenever I was looking at buying one of these guitars and I ended up buying both of them because I got them for really good deals and now I hope to make this for whoever's trying to make a decision like this. This is the Schecter Sun Valley Super Shredder um, with the Sustaniac in it. This is the FR-S. Um, but this one has a Sustaniac in it. They do have an option where it's just two humbuckers but I really wanted the Sustaniac because I didn't have a guitar with the Sustaniac in it until this guitar and that one on the wall, which I'll do a video about later. Um, and then this is the Ibanez Jim Jr. This is in the really apparently hard to find yellow um, with the pinkish pickups and stuff. And this thing's sweet too. Um, so I guess that first and foremost, uh, the reason why I chose these, I didn't necessarily choose the colors. I did want a, uh, originally I wanted the birch green color of this one. And then I wanted the pinkish color of this one. But this one popped up online for like 300 bucks, and this one popped up online for like 550 technically, but I was able to get them down to 400 because I traded a laptop with it. So all that being said, um, I was able to get these two guitars for relatively the same price, and um, when you compare base model of this one without the... Uh, Without the Sustaniac in it, it's very close to the $500 starting price of this retail. So that's really what started me down this whole track was the retail price of both of these and like, oh gosh, which one is the right one or which one do I want? Um, so I'm going to try to go through these in the best detail I can, um, giving you the best choice whenever you're buying these. Now, I bought these with my own money. This isn't sponsored by anyone. Of course, it would be cool if this was sponsored by someone, but I don't really have that kind of a YouTube channel. Um, so that being said, let's get into it. And another thing about the guitars that I'm not really going to compare is the wood materials, um, mostly because they're just different depending on which one. I mean, this Ibanez Jim Jr., there's so many different colors. Um, I'm not going to compare colors. I'm not going to even, like, I think this is a Jatoba uh, fretboard, um, but... It, I'm not really going into all that stuff. I mean, I'll talk about what it looks like because I think it's cool, but I'm not going to necessarily go into like what it's all made of because the other one's maple, but the Schecter Sun Valley Super Shredder has different options for rosewood or maple and, and yada, yada, yada. So all that you can see online, I'm kind of just trying to get more of a feel and what the usability of these guitars really is like. So first is bodies. So the bodies of these are Super Strats, and meaning in my definition really for a super strat is not official so don't take my word on it but it has to have a pick guard and um, it has to have 24 fret access um, and some kind of tremolo system so uh, like a floating trim but that's my version of a super strat um, not everyone may agree with me but that's just what I was looking for whenever I was picking out these guitars first so this has more of a strat feel, and I say that because the uh, edges are rounded and curved, um, very much, very similar to, well, let's see, where is that? Your traditional strat. Um, so this is actually very, very comfortable, and it's even more comfortable than a strat because it has a cut in here, um, and then it also has a little uh, hand comfort hold spot whatever contour you know good words like that um so yeah so that's that's the perks of this body right here um and the ibanez has the very flat body so it has very sharp edges in terms of like um you know it, it doesn't have much contouring to it other than the arm contour the belly and then if you look at this side, it's just rounded right here. It doesn't actually contour like the Schecter had, where it had like a little contour right there, and then it'd go to the handhold. Um, but still pretty comfortable. 
But one of the first things I remember whenever I tried this, the Jim Jr. out in a store, it was like a black one. It was just like not as comfortable as a Stratocaster. And so that was kind of my hold up at first. Um, but the more I've played this, the more I have actually really enjoyed it for some of its other features. I actually really like this handle right here. Some people may think it's dorky or stupid, but I don't know, I like it. It's nice to be able to pick up the guitar like this sometimes, especially if it's on a uh, um, guitar stand that is side loaded. So um, I'm gonna move on to the tremolo system. So the trim in these two guitars, uh, and by that I mean like the, uh, the bridge, the floating tremolo that both of these has. It's a double locking floating tremolo. Um, I'll start with the Ibanez first because it's the least impressive to me, um, which is kind of a bummer. So the top, it has like a, um, you can kind of see here where it's like a black metal. Um, so it's not like black, black, but it's like a black chrome. I don't know exactly what the color is. I'm trying to pull it up online, but not, not sure. It's, it's a really cool look to it. I love the way it looks, but it's cheap and it feels bad, which, which stinks. Um, I set this thing up to try to like, um, do flutters and stuff on it and um upon setting it up when i initially got this guitar i got it used yes but the dude played it a few times and set it down and never touched it again so i basically got a brand new guitar because he couldn't figure out the floyd rose so whenever i was looking through it and uh fixing it up i noticed that the plate here for this was really weak um and it actually nicked pretty easy on the um two posts here so that was kind of a bummer and i was like well maybe it's just you know maybe it's just something that that'll be fine and the more i started to play it and use it uh, the more it started going out of tune which floyd rose guitars when you set up correctly um they don't really go out of tune like they hold their tuning very very well um and so i was actually really surprised and kind of upset by it and i was like maybe i did something wrong since this is Ibanez's version of this, it's not actually a Floyd Rose. I think it's still licensed by Floyd Rose, but it's Ibanez's trim system. So I did a, a lot of research and I found that these are a huge problem and a lot of people just replace them with the Godot uh, 1996 T's or whatever. Um, and then they stop having the issues. So that's something to consider for this guitar. So for whatever price you get it for, you'll probably end up replacing this uh, bridge, the tremolo system. And uh, yeah, and I'm also on a side note, like I'm not a huge fan of the twist arm. So like this can lock in any position, you know, I could loosen it if I wanted to just have it dangling, but I like to move it and let it stay where it is. So that's cool, but it twists and locks in place and it's not that great um, compared to a pop and trim, which you'll see on the Schecter. So now onto the Schecter. Um, this guitar's trim is a Floyd Rose Special. Um, which everyone hates, uh, supposedly. But it's a hot-rotted version of it. And what that means is they've just gone in and put, like, the stainless steel, like, accents on it, which, I mean, I think it looks super tight. You got, like, the different colorings between the black metal and then the stainless steel. Um, and especially in this black color, it looks, it just makes the guitar pop in a really cool way. Um, but I've had zero issues with this. Um, I can flutter on this thing and uh, bounce around, and I've had very little tuning problems with it. Now, I know that these things, everyone hates them because with time, they wear down a lot faster, but compared to the Ibanez and how that one already needs a uh, new bridge in it, it's not bad. So, um, who knows? It may need a replacing sooner rather than later, but just something to consider with these guitars is that they don't have top-of-the-line um, tremolo systems in them. Um, but this one is a pop-in, um, which is really neat, and you have a little tight set screw there that just lets you set it to where you want it, or you can loosen it if you just want to leave it, leave it dangling. Um, so that's the tremolo systems for you. Okay, so tonal options of these two guitars. Um, I'll start with the Ibanez first. Um, by tonal options, I mean like what do you have available to you um, to get tones out of these guitars before they go into your equipment. Um, I'm, I don't know if I'm going to play a full demo of all the sounds and everything because that's just going to take a long time and everyone runs through something different so it's not really going to matter too much to you. Um, just know that it is a bigger spectrum in terms of these are passive pickups and the Schecters are active. Um, 
But for the Ibanez, I have, you know, you have a volume and tone and then a five way switch. Um, and this has custom wiring to change how these pickups work. And they split these coils for middle positions. It's really neat. I'll put a picture of it on the screen. Um, but that being said, you actually, I think, I believe you have the most tonal options in terms of like, um, being able to switch and get a, get a pretty hot middle position here and then get a sweet, awesome metal, uh, humbucker sound here and then a fat neck sound i don't know i really honestly have been blown away by how these stock pickups sound um i've been enjoying the crap out of them i even tuned this guitar down to drop b at one point and was just chugging away and having a blast and it sounded incredible so uh and this is an e standard right now i set it back up an e standard and put some strings on it and um yeah man it's just a fun guitar all around and tonal options of the Schecter uh it's very much like I said earlier it's a nine volt it's actually two nine volts that run this whole system and you have to have them in together um to get the whole system working it's kind of a little bit of a lame situation I'm going to try to figure out if I can wire because it has two battery covers in the back which I'll go into later um but that's not the point. The point is uh, tonal options. So uh, it has an active EMG, meaning that it requires a nine volt battery. It's very hot, very famous EMG that everyone loves. And it's in this guitar and it sounds great for like tons of metal, shreddy stuff. Um, but the interesting thing about this is because it's got the Sustainiac here, um, it's gonna be different than your dual humbucker one. The Sustainiac is not actually a pickup. It's just an amplifier, a tiny amp that like rings out your strings for you so whenever i'm going to the middle position and the front position here um normally you'd be splitting them in the middle and then the front would be just this front one but it actually what it is is the sustainiac's circuit has an eq inside that like changes this one this pickups configuration and eq puts a little eq on it to make it sound like a middle position and then it changes the eq again to make it sound like uh the neck pickup so it's actually all just this pickup that runs uh, the whole entire guitar which is really interesting i don't know if i'm a huge fan of that that was just something that i didn't know until i owned the guitar but it does have a tone a volume um and a tone knob so there's tons of options with it but if you're like have to have a neck pick pickup and need that sound i mean it gets the job done for sure but it's kind of like hard to replace a neck pickup and have it sound like a neck pickup and then a little bit of a fun um section is modability like how easy are these guitars to mod um and work on the uh, obviously they use a lot of standard parts so it's very simple um to change out the parts on some of these with standard things like for instance the ibanez you can put a goto trim in, and you really don't have to do too much modding to it you don't have to drill into it to get that um yeah, i mean if you want to use the goto posts which is recommended then you can drill in and use that but it's up to you and your um, want to tear into that uh, and then it has the HSH configuration under the pick guard so if you take the pick guard off and you're hoping that it's, you can do HHH um, you can't really do that unless you use like one of the hot rail single coil humbuckers um, yeah pretty standard other than that like your typical modding stuff if, if you're trying to change pickup configurations it's very much like a strat um, same with this one, except it, it does have some more complex stuff with the Sustainiac. So um, I have two battery packs right here, which I'm not a huge fan of. Um, and it's mostly because you have to have both batteries in to run the guitar fully with the Sustainiac and with the active EMG. And they're not separate. This It's not like this one's the pickup and this one's the Sustainiac. So I'm hoping to rewire it all, but I kept it all stock for this video to give a fair review. Um, but yeah, so the battery system is there. You have a control cavity here that's just for uh, the Sustainiac. So that's where the Sustainiac lives is in that. And then um, all this under here is pretty standard for an HH guitar. The only thing that's missing is a uh, the center is not routed out. So if you wanted to do HSH or HHH, um, you would have to actually route that out. And then you'd be able to do it um, underneath. So kind of a little bit of a bummer but if you wanted to upgrade other things uh, on this guitar like if you wanted to upgrade to a german fluid rose or something like that or, or just a higher gauge fluid rose very easy to do 
um, it's all standard fluid rose parts already so uh, you're pretty set there so for this next part it's gonna be the functionality of these guitars um, and by that I just mean more things that you're gonna run into owning these guitars and messing with them so first I'll note out the truss rod this one has your traditional truss rod cover in the headstock um, that you have to remove those screws and pull it out and get it all done um, kind of annoying to be honest I've had I had to do that whenever I set up the guitar and it was just kind of a pain with that little bar that holds the strings down and then the truss rod covers on top of it it's just kind of a pain um, and then the Schecter has it like a very modern style where it's in the neck near the neck pickup um, at the bottom of the heel of the neck so I like that a lot but it's just that's more of your opinion if you think whatever um, but I prefer this style right here for the truss rod adjustment so um, the other thing that was interesting that I didn't really think about this has a blade switch for the pickup selector so it has the five-way blade switch this is more of like a Gibson style three-way switch where it's like circular a circular type of switch um, and I didn't really know that notice that until I bought the guitar um, and the other thing is this one's passive so this needs no batteries at all to run and can just do whatever it wants um, and this one does need batteries to run and will not run without batteries so uh, something to note if you get the dual humbucker version it's just one set of batteries for those uh, you don't need two nine volts which is kind of a pain um, or you can just replace the pickups but like I said this is stock experience so I'm just trying to give a stock review um, both are 24 frets which is why I love them why I like them um, and then the input jack placement I think is interesting this one has an input jack placement there uh, and it, it actually is great so whenever you go over your strap if you're playing live you go over your strap and in there it actually holds it really nicely and it gets out of your way um, and it's great for playing on your lap uh, and stuff like that it's just it's actually pretty well thought out um, this one has your traditional uh, like bottom of the uh, strap. It's not like a normal strap where it's like on the plate but it's on the bottom of the guitar there. It's pretty traditional for most uh, modern guitars now um, and it's fine you know it's nothing nothing too crazy about it but I thought it was at least worth mentioning it for this one because this is pretty pretty neat how they did that. The headstocks. So this one actually has a volute on the back to where you can see it kind of comes up. Um, it's, it's not a hundred percent of volute. It's like very similar where this one just goes straight onto the back. You see how this one kind of has a little bit of a like curved heel up at the top and then this one doesn't. It just goes straight into the headstock. So I thought that wouldn't bother me, but ironically, whenever I put them on my guitar stands on the walls, um, they don't really fit. This one doesn't really fit properly. Um, and so I have to like get a different stand for this, which is kind of annoying. Um, but just something to think about if you're hanging these guitars that I didn't think about. So weight wise, they honestly weigh very similarly. They're not, they're not terrible. Um, I, you know, they're very comfortable to play, very comfortable to hold. And um, they're not like Les Pauls or anything like that. So overall, these are two really cool guitars. And um, I was looking at both of them to purchase um, one of them, not both, but ended up getting both. And I don't think I'm going to get rid of either one of them because they're pretty darn neat and they do a lot of different stuff. It's not just like they can do the same thing and I'm keeping the same guitar. So, um, very neat guitars and I really enjoy them. Um, and they have their own styles to them. So yeah, thank you for watching. I hope this video helped. I'm going to have some, um, maybe I'll have some chug in or something at the end where I'm playing the guitars and messing around on them. So you kind of get to hear back and forth. Um, but yeah, that's really it for this video. I appreciate you watching. And uh, yeah, let me know in the comments if you have any questions about these guitars or um, want to see more videos like these. Thanks.